Right, I'm going to show you how to do one of the required A-level biology practicals. This is required for the full A-level, but not for the AS level. And it's an investigation into the effects of a named environmental factor on the distribution of a given species. So what we're actually going to investigate today is the effects of, we're going to investigate, interspecific competition by trees on the distribution of white clover which is Trifolium repens. So a very common grassland plant species in this country. You could actually change this investigation and use any grass, you know, common grassland species wherever you live. Okay? Now everybody can recognise, I hope, white clover. Um, you know, as children we've all looked for four-leaf clovers. Now it's given the name Trifolium because its leaves have three little leaflets like that, so it's very recognisable. At certain times of year it does also produce small, creamy white to slightly pinky flowers. Okay, so hopefully we can all recognise that. Now what you need to carry out this investigation, um, ideally a really long wind-out tape measure, about 20 metres long, 10 or 20 metres. If you haven't got that, you can easily use some long pieces of string, so here I've got 10 metre pieces of string and I've been along there with a metre ruler and I've actually stuck sticky, sticky tape at every metre mark and you could even write the metres on there if you like. Okay, I'm going to use this and a couple of tent pegs there to, to lay out what we call a line transect from the tree moving outwards. Okay, now today I've laid out a 20 metre transect, but obviously it can vary its length depending on what you're investigating. I'm under quite a large tree, so I chose a slightly longer one. Now other things you're going to need here is some way of actually measuring the abundance of the clover plants at different positions along the transect. And to do that, we can usually use a gridded quadrat like this, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Or if you want to be a little bit less subjective, a bit more objective, we can use something called a point frame or point quadrat. So I'll show you how to use that in a moment. Okay, now the line transect is an example of what's known as systematic sampling. Okay, so we are going to position quadrats along a line transect at regular intervals. So it's not random, the transect is going to tell us where to put the quadrats. So it's systematic. Okay, now, so what you're going to do, you're going to go along your, your uh, transect and at your metre markings, or if it's a very long transect, every other metre, you know, every two metres, you're going to place your quadrat. So there is a gridded frame quadrat, okay? You're going to place it against the metre marking on the ground. And the reason we're using a gridded quadrat is if we're trying to estimate the abundance of clover, um, it's very difficult to actually count the individual clover plants because they all merge into one. So what we have to do here is actually try and work out the percentage of the ground covered in that quadrat. If we've got a gridded quadrat, that's easy because all we have to do is count the number of squares that contain clover, divide that by the total number in the quadrat and then multiply it by 100 and we've got our percentage covered by clover. Now this is a little bit subjective because you've got to decide, you know, does a square with maybe just one little bit in there contain clover or does it not? Okay, so it is a little bit subjective. So here I've counted up and I found that 17 out of the 20 squares contain clover. So 17 divided by 20 multiplied by 100 will give you your percentage covering clover. And obviously you need to be recording this in your results table. Okay, now there is a slightly more quantitative, less subjective, in other words, more objective way of doing this. And this is to use what's known as a point frame, or some people call this a point quadrat. And you can see it's just a wooden frame with a number of pins in it. Often they have 10 pins. If you're going to use this, you don't have to estimate and decide whether each square you know, is full of clover or not. All you'll do, you go along to the, you know, the mark, the metre mark on your tape measure, you put that down on the ground and you lower the pins. If they hit a clover plant, you call that a hit. If they don't, it's a miss. And it's very easy to work out the percentage covered by clover 
you know, it's basically the number of hits divided by the total number of pins lowered, and that will give you, you know, times 100, that's your percentage cover. Okay, so we do that, as I said, every metre or every two metres along our transect. Now, you could make this a little bit more scientific here. There's lots of different things you can investigate. Here I've got a little probe that measures, you know, you can actually stick that in the ground at every metre marking. That measures actually soil moisture, soil pH and light intensity. Okay, so you know, there's all different kinds of investigations you could find out here. Okay, now then, the key thing is, once you've collected your data here, the obvious thing to do is to draw a scatter graph of your results and it may show some kind of correlation. Unfortunately, that's not good enough for scientists because if we want to, you know, really know if there is a correlation between distribution of clover, abundance of clover and distance from the tree, we have to carry out some kind of statistical analysis. And remember, statistical analysis is carried out to calculate the probability that any correlation we do see in our results has occurred by chance. Because if there's a high probability that it's occurred by chance, it means there's no real correlation. Okay, now in this case, because we are investigating a correlation between two variables, we would carry out a Spearman's rank correlation coefficient or a Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. Um, you will not have to carry these out in the exam, but you should be able to choose which test to apply to various sort of environmental uh, investigations.